Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm going to be very brief. Pastor asked me to uh, come on and talk a little bit about the spirit of excellence. And then Pastor Knox will follow up with um, soul winning. Two very important subjects. And so I want to start off by saying how grateful we are uh, for your service uh, to the Miracle Church. Thank you so much for volunteering your time. We really do appreciate everything that you do. And we want you to understand that we love each and every one of you. And um, pastor from the bedrock of his heart prays for each and every one of you on a daily basis, on a continuum. I may miss it, but he gets it every single day. Praise the Lord. And so thank you again for your service to the Miracle Church and for volunteering your time. And please realize, and I'm about to get into it now, realize that volunteering it's something that you do from your heart. It's not payment, compensation, or anything like that. So we want to impress upon you that when you volunteer, you're doing that as unto the Lord, not unto man. Yeah. And yeah. the Lord has an expectation that whatever we do for him, that it be done decently and that it be done in order. And with that, it has to be done with the spirit of excellence. So I um, want to ensure that we understand that excellence has to be conveyed in what we do. And when we do it, we're representing Christ. And if we're not operating in a spirit of excellence, then we're not representing Christ. And let me get my, my scripture up. I thought it was up just a moment here. We're going to start off in the book of Daniel. And I'm going to encourage you all to read uh, the book of Daniel because I don't have time to go into all of that. I'm just going to touch bases on a few scriptures. So take the time to read the, the book of Daniel. I've got my scripture up. Praise the Lord. So in Christendom, if you watch YouTube or look at Facebook or anything like that, or hear any preachers preach, a lot of times you will hear them use the bud word uh, moving to the next level. Have you ever heard anybody say that? We got to move to the next level. Yeah, but, yes, but I'm going to tell you, that yeah. won't happen moving to the next level until we become excellent in what we have now or where we are now. That's anybody. Mm -hmm. And when we become excellent in what we have, that's when we're ready to move to the next level. Amen. Think about, think about it this way. Why would God advance us to the next if we're not faithful or excellent in our now? Um, it's, required. it's a requirement that we be faithful in our now. We all know Hebrews, it says now faith is. So essentially, we're required to be faithful now. We're required to operate in an excellent spirit now. We're required to do things decently and in order now. So I was thinking about it today for a person who, I've heard this before. I'm gonna wait to clean up, pardon, that's my phone. I'm gonna wait to clean up when I get a mansion. <laughs> have y'all heard that before I'm going to wait to clean up my house when I get my mansion because some people don't like to clean me I'm, I'm one of these people if it ain't clean I, I'm, I'm going nuts I'm just yeah. one of those uh, OCD type people that got to be dressed right dress and all of that and it, it's kind of asinine so pardon the way that I say that but if, if, if we have that attitude I'm going to wait to do something until that will actually transcend even over into our spirituality. Mm -hmm. See, cleaning now must become our normality. And so it is with the spirit of excellence. That has to become yeah. our normality so that when God moves us into the next, it's our normality. Are y'all following me? Amen. Amen. So I want to take a quick peep at Daniel. We're going to look at chapter six, verse three. And April, if you could put that in the chat for us, Daniel chapter six, verse three. And again, I encourage you all to read the entire book of Daniel. Just don't have to touch on it. But you're going to find that Daniel was an individual who had an excellent spirit. Okay. So here it reads, Daniel chapter six, verse three. It says, then this, Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. Yes. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Now I'm gonna read that again. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. 
So excellence, I looked that up in the Hebrew. I'm not going to try to pronounce yeah, it, word, but what it means. Can you put that out, please? Okay. It's, it's coming it. over in here. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Let me get my scripture up. I've got my scripture and all that on my, I've got dual keyboards. So y'all forgive me on that. With the scriptures. Okay. So excellent again in, in the Hebrew, it means to surpass surpass and it says here in this particular scripture because of his excellent spirit he was preferred above all and the king set him over everything so his excellent spirit and what i read got him promoted it got him noticed his excellent spirit so i don't know about you but i want to operate in an excellent spirit and in order yeah. to do that i've touched on a, i'm going to touch on a couple of key points things that need to happen in order for us to operate in an excellent spirit. Aside from just desiring it, there's some things that we must do to ensure that we're operating in an excellent spirit. Number one, and you can write these down, or April, you can put them in the chat if you desire. We Amen. have to realize we are a reflection of Christ. Amen. In our words and in our deeds. Understand this. We have been made in the image of Christ and we've been made after his likeness. So with yeah. that fact, we too have an excellent spirit. Because we're made in his image, because we're made after his likeness, we too have an excellent spirit. When we receive Jesus Christ, he gave us everything that we need that need pertains it. to this life and God. Right. So that means right now we have an excellent, excellent spirit. Now we may need to cultivate it some, <laughs> but we have his spirit right now. We have the ability to walk in excellence right now. Amen. And our ministry and service should be a reflection of that spirit. Simply mm -hmm. put, if we're not ex exuding a spirit of excellence, we are not reflecting Christ. The two <laughs> have to walk together. Excellence and the reflection of Christ, they ante up and walk together. Now, number two, I don't know why my screen wants to just keep popping off, but number two, we have to purpose to do all things decently and in order. Oh, that's right. Okay? How are we realistically representing Christ if we're not following God's directive? See, that's God's directive. It's not my directive. It's not pastor's directive. He said we're to do all things decently and in order. So he requires us to do things decent and in order. And we really have to grab hold to order and we have to grab hold to protocol okay god is head and he places an under shepherd in the form of a pastor in this case it would be pastor walter so the pastor the way it works the pastor gets the instructions from god not us and then that pastor disseminates those instructions and we follow through so in addition to that pastor can also designate who disseminate those instructions to and through. Mm -hmm. And if he does it that way, guess what? We're still obligated to follow through. Now, if we buck the system or if we buck the des designee, we're not only bucking the pastor, we're also bucking who God gave the initial instructions to. Right. And guess what that equates to? It equates to indecent and it equates to out of order. Okay. So again, he says, do all things decent and in order praise be to god number three number three we have to do all things to the glory of god yes you can write this down from first corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 i'm not going to read over it but that's what that scripture refers to do all things to the glory of god okay. everything we do should be done for the glory of god not man that's right if we're looking for accolades of man, we've already have our reward. Amen. I can earnestly tell you, Pastor, not on the line yet, but I can earnestly tell you at my age and stage in life, I could care less about an accolade. Yes. I'm telling you, the, the God's honest truth. I'm 57, soon to be 58. It's not anything that even floats my boat at this particular juncture in my life. Why? Because let me tell you something about praise from man. Man can praise you today and then shout crucifixion for you tomorrow. And that's the exact same thing 
that so, happened to Jesus man. Christ. They held him one day and they were ready yeah. to crucify him the next day. So what yeah. I'm saying to you, don't do it for the praise of man because it's always going to be temporal. Mm -hmm. what, you see, what you see is temporal, but what God gives is eternal. Mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. said himself, and this is one of my favorite scriptures. Jesus says, I come quickly and my yeah. reward, my reward, Jesus says, is with me to give yeah. to every man according to Do his it. work. Work. So that uh -huh. says to me, he will do the rewarding for the work, not man. Yeah. All of it's temporary. So in order to get the reward, though, one thing I see in there, we got to put some work in. Yeah. And let me clarify this. When I say we have to put the work in, I'm not talking about working for our salvation. That's already been bought and paid for. Mm -hmm. But we all should be contributing to the work. Okay. And we contribute to that work with our time. We contribute to that work with our talents. And we okay. contribute yeah. to that work with what evangelist Bradley, our possessions. Our gifts. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, and when we do that, we have to do it with the spirit of excellence. And yes. our Pastor Knox is going to come on next and he's going to tell you how we can contribute to this work, which is already finished, by the way. So we still are contributors to what Jesus Christ has already finished. Number yeah. four, and I'm almost done. Number yeah. four in obtaining or operating in the excellent spirit is we have to perfect our craft. Yes, Meaning we have to perfect our assignment, our craft. And once we perfected it, we continue to study. Why? Because the things that we study are the things that we know they're subject to change. Mm -hmm. And so when they do change, we don't want to be taken aback. We want to be ready. So we continue to study. And so just a side note on there, when things do change, don't get offended. Just go with the flow. Go with the flow. In, in the professional arena, it's called CEs or continuing education. Some professions, amen. They're, amen. Some professions, they're required to perfect their craft by enrolling in what they call CEs or continued education. Amen. And that keeps them relevant and that keeps them in the know. Okay. And did you not know that 2 Timothy 2.15 instructs us what? To study, study to, to show ourselves approved. That's what show it is. Amen. Y'all can finish it out. Show ourselves approved unto yeah. God. Unto God, a work my need not be in a shame, but rightly dividing the word of truth. But the key in there is show yourself approved unto God, not man. God. Yeah. I told you earlier, we don't do it for man. Study yeah. to show yourself approved unto God. And then it says a workman. And I told you earlier on, there's some work involved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly yes. dividing the word of truth. And our bishop <laughs> always told us, if you can rightly divide it, then you can wrongly divide it. We all the on the other side of right. Amen. Amen. Now, as of late, as of late, we've made some minor changes to several things um, as relates to the Miracle Church. And there's some more changes that are going to be coming down the pipe. And uh, we, we've changed some things where it comes to the order of service. You may have noticed we put the announcements before the, the offering. That's been a change. We've disseminated that through um, text. I don't know Pastor has shared that information as well to those who need to know. And we made some tweaks with the announcements and uh, April's aware of those. And we made some tweaks with the sound system. Sound system's aware of that. And those affected, we want you to study your changes. We want you to continue to stay abreast as to what is changing because you signed up for it. So we don't want you to assume, okay? Continue to study, read the texts that come out. Sometimes I send them via uh, a verbal or sometimes I send them where you can read them. So study your craft is what I'm trying to tell you. Yes. Read it and reread it. We want you to perfect your craft. And I told hubby, uh, one of these days, I don't know when, but one of these days, I want to draft an SOP, a standard operation procedure. Uh, but the time just not has not um, been good to me as of yet. But one of these days, I'm going to get that done. And if we got any volunteers, amen, <laughs> I welcome you. Amen. But that's actually going to be uh, quite a tedious task because we have quite a few auxiliaries and uh, we want to be decent in order with our instruction and SOPs uh, on that. Number five. You must have a spirit of a finisher. Yes. You must have a spirit of a finisher to operate in excellence. And that goes hand in hand. I'm here some feedback. If you can take a look at that, I'm hearing some feedback. Oh no, it's not church people. And if you can mute whoever is talking, please, I appreciate it. 
So again, you must have a spirit of a finisher, which goes hand in hand with the spirit of excellence. Now, we didn't talk about this, but Daniel, he actually trained for three years under the king before he could ever serve. Yes. And he would have never been appointed to serve under the king unless he finished his training. You can find mm -hmm. that in Daniel chapter one. So to have the spirit of excellence, you must have the spirit of a finisher. Remember yeah. what your savior said before he gave up the ghost. He said, it's finished. So yeah. like our savior, we must possess a spirit of a finisher. And then Daniel mm -hmm. took the spirit of a finisher all the way to the lion's den. Daniel yeah. had the spirit of a finisher. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the last one I'm going to give you, then I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Knox. The last one is we must be disciplined. In yes. order to operate in the spirit of excellence, you must be disciplined. Another key thing that I didn't mention about Daniel, but please read the whole book. It's just power chopped with so many yes. things. Yes. But yes. Daniel prayed three times a day. Yes. It may not sound like much, but in the busy days and yes. all these things that we got going on, Daniel prayed yes. three times a day consistently. Yes. Mm -hmm. He was disciplined. Mm -hmm. And this discipline, it actually defines what a disciple is. Disciple mm -hmm. means a disciplined one. Yes. So if you're calling yourself a disciple of Christ, then what you're mm -hmm. saying about yourself is that you're disciplined. Yes. Uh -huh. You're disciplined if you call yourself a disciple yes. of Christ. And can I tell you that when you're disciplined, going to church and serving in church is not an option. Yes. Not when you're disciplined. That's right. See, there's a verse of scripture that Pastor and I, we often refer to. When um, we um, a like I said, I don't know whose voice I'm hearing, but it's kind of distracting. So um, when Pastor and I, when we minister or counsel individuals, there's, there's a scripture that we use from the book of, of Luke, where it says where Jesus according to his custom, entered into the synagogue. Yes. In our vernacular, we would say, as our custom, we go to church. So Jesus again says, according to his custom, he entered into the synagogue. So yes. church attendance for Jesus or the synagogue attendance for Jesus was not optional. It was yes. his custom. That's right. And unfortunately, many have worship and service as an option. Their worship and service for them, for some reason they've been screwed in their mind, is an option. Uh -huh. All right but, now. But I'm going to tell you what, we're all going to find out real quick when we meet the Lord that it's not an option. option. It, 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 was, it wasn't optional. So the verse that says, um, it's coming to me, they that put their hands to the plow and look back, not fit for the kingdom, we're going to find that out too. God does not, God does not smile upon people who quit. No man. We're, we're not to start something and not finish it. We have to That's have right. the spirit of a finisher. That's we right. have to be disciplined individuals if we're going to obtain the spirit of excellence. Disciples are always committed to finish. So I'm admonishing you, don't quit in God's kingdom for any reason. For, no reason. for any reason. It, even if something don't go your way, don't quit. Because it's not supposed to be your way anyway. It's his way. Our ways are to, to conform into his ways. If you have to be corrected, don't quit. Just take the correction, be disciplined, and keep your excellent spirit moving. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do. Just keep it moving if you want to obtain an excellent spirit or walk in an excellent spirit. And I'm going to close with this one, uh, Pastor Daryl. I'm from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. And I want you to uh, take note of this scripture, and I want you to marinate on this scripture. And I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to read it to you probably twice. And this is Paul, the apostle, speaking. 1 Timothy 3.15 says, But if I tarry long, that mm -hmm. thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And I'm going to repeat the scripture. 1 Timothy 3.15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the yes. pillar and ground of the truth. And a pillar is something that's unmovable. You can't move a pillar. Right. So wherever we go, be it work, be it home, 
be it school, the store, wherever you frequent, wherever you go, there's a certain behavior that's ascribed to that environment. And just as we know how to properly adapt and align ourselves in those environments, is no different when it comes to church. Come on. The scripture says we ought to know how to behave ourselves in church. church. Amen. And I'm going to just say this. If you don't know how to behave yourself in church, guess who will teach you? The Holy Ghost. He teaches Both. all Amen. things. He'll teach you how to behave yourself in church. If you just hearken, if you just listen. What does it say? He that have an ear to hear, let him hear. But the Spirit He'll teach us how to behave ourselves. So keep in mind, in closing here, Daniel, he caught the eye of the king because his excellent spirit distinguished him above his peers and all others, so much so that he was promoted over everybody. Yes. The spirit of excellence will get you noticed. The spirit of excellence will get you noticed. Amen. And also, if you read it, it offered Daniel a whole lot of favor. Daniel had a whole lot of favor. Hey, yes, so he cultivate the spirit of excellence in you. God bless you all, and I pray that you receive the word. Amen. 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 Amen.